I had only just seen the Castle clarification. So tonight is going to be the first listening session that the city is holding around or in sick and safe time. And so workers, Latino workers in the community are going to talk about their experiences and why or in sick and safe time is important. Latino business owners are also going to share their perspective on uh, on what they want to see with or in sick and safe time policy. Do you expect any pushback from businesses? Um, you know, I think there there generally is, and I think that this is this is a conversation that needs to be had. Though we need to make sure that um, that this is a space where workers can actually have a voice okay. that don't always get to, and that's it, that's what's important okay. about. This. Why are you here tonight? Estamos llevando a cabo una lucha para so we're part of a campaign to be able to raise up these issues and make sure that we can have paid sick days on the job. Okay, where do you work? McDonald's. Where? Uh, in the Ebet Hospital. Okay, and you do not have sick and safe time now? No tienes días terminado. No. No. Do you, do you expect that this will happen? ¿Crees que vamos a poder lograr esto? I think that if all of us stand up and speak up, then yes. What's the attitude of your manager or the management of McDonald's? ¿Cuál es la actitud de los managers de McDonald's? Muy negativos hacia nosotros. So re regarding the people that are that have been involved in this struggle, management has not been supportive. They've been very negative. There's been retaliation against people for standing up for their rights, and they they just they're not they're not with us. Okay, and, and this is about the second safe time, not about minimum wage. Y esto es sobre días de enfermedad pagados, no sobre el sueldo mínimo. Sí, hablando sobre el sobre las enfermedades, eso sí nos está afectando porque a veces tenemos. This is about our safety. This is about our health. This is about our children. Our children sometimes get sick and then we need to take the day off to be able to take care of them and they refuse to let us take the day off. I'm here to lift up our voices as workers so that our voices can be heard so that they hear us and understand the problems that we face that, that make it necessary to have sick and sick time. And where do you work? Nigan. Um, I'm, I work at a, a furniture factory. What's your expectation tonight? We're hopeful that we'll be heard so that we can have solutions to our problems. I, I'm part of the task force. I'm okay. a member of the task your force. Your name is? Tony LaCroix de Lune. Okay, so you're here to listen. I am very much here to listen. I've got my, my, my notebook right here. It's, it's the very first uh, forum, and so that's on the uh, Earn Safe and Sick proposal, and listening to workers, listening to business owners, and so I was interested to see who was here and listen myself. And so you're here to listen. I'm here to listen. Do you think that the combination of the sick and safe time with minimum wage was a mistake going before the council? You know, uh, well. The minimum wage wasn't part of the package that was going before the council. So the minimum wage is on a sort of a little bit of a different pathway. It is now, um, I think they have the RFP out to be able to do a study on some of the in, uh, economic impacts because people had just more general questions about that. I your position on both issues, on minimum wage and on sick and safe time. Well, I've been a vocal supporter for a long time of the Earn Safe and Sick. Um, more recently, I've, I've uh, put out a public position that I support raising the wage. And at the city level, I do think it would be best at a broader level of government. But if we can't get it done, I think it deserves to get done. So we will see, though, at the city uh, whether there's a support for that or not. I think that's a little bit with with. Uh, with the earned sick and safe time, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll all see what in the end happens, but what I believe may happen is we're going to get a proposal and we're going to get a chance to vote it up or down. And I think uh, there seems to be remain strong support of the council for a proposal. Um, we have the council president who has asked to be and is a, a chief author now of this proposal. I think that's very significant and says something yeah, about her um, belief this is a very, very important issue. I think on the minimum wage, there, that's no secret that that has always been an, an, an issue that at least as far as raising the wage at the city level, this, the council is much more divided. And the mayor has had a public position out there. I don't 
know if she's going to change that. I'm not anticipating she would, where she says she believes a, a broader level of government than the city should initiate that. So the scheduling issue is one where I think um, we did end up seeing there were several employers that um, indicated that their eyes were opened to what were some of the impacts around scheduling practices and then they had conversations with their employees and they looked at how they could change their scheduling practices to be more friendly to uh, and attractive I should say also to retaining good workers um, a lot of employers uh, I would say virtually all employers care about that quite a lot, retaining good employees. It's just how they start to open their eyes and their mind to what they can do that might be different from how they have traditionally run their business, but still could result in good uh, business practices that are beneficial to them and to their employees.